Watch this. The only sin against God, the only sin humanity can sin against God is refusing the saving work of grace. This is the only sin that affects God. Every other sin is sin against humanity and sin against yourself. Now, for instance, why will God not want to drink alcohol? Because you're going to have diabetes. It's that simple. Why will God not want you to always have sex? It's because of infections. And it's because of, you're going to break your heart many times. You're going to have a lot of heart crash. And God needs your heart. You need your own heart also. Why will God not want you to fight? You're going to cause a damage to yourself. So every sin God said don't do, it's not because of him, it's because of you. If you see it from that perspective, you preserve your life. When Solomon said, follow my counsel, wisdom was saying, say, follow my counsel, then you're going to have long life. It simply means if you keep following the rules that God placed in the word of God, not really just in but for your own benefit, you're going to live and last long here on earth. That's very powerful. That's very powerful. Now, what am I trying to say? Most of the food you find God say, don't eat in the Bible, don't eat in the Bible. It's not because those food is a sin to him. You can eat it and still get to heaven, but you're going to go to heaven too soon. So I, I was speaking to a young person. I said, look at your, your father, look at your mom. If you see the sickness that they are having at their old age, you can predict the one you will have because every sickness has a pattern. It has a root. It's either what happens in your bloodline and it's very simple. If you know what is the sickness that is common in your bloodline, you can avoid them. For instance, if your father died of diabetes, what is your business with sugar? What is your business with alcohol? What is your business with star and gouda and hero? You see what is dragging you to the Biapalo is what will kill you. Don't forget it. So, it has nothing to do with God. All those social eating you drink because of your friend, you are taking 12, but because now your body can con contain it. You are 35, you are 36. What you are not seeing is you're 47 years old. In the next 10 years, you're going to be bedridden. Now, it's very simple. If you have things like diabetes, and how will you know it's in your pattern? If your father or your mother has something like that, you need to walk against it. Avoid sugar, avoid this. So, Bible said that fools, because of their foolishness and transgression, because they are walking in the wrong path. Let me say this. Every problem is a wisdom problem. Any problem you are going through today, there is a missing knowledge. When the Bible says my people suffer and they go into captivity because they lack knowledge, it's not joking. And you see what? He even put his word there, his name there. He said, these ones are my people, but I cannot help them. Can I say this? God can never tell you what you hear from a mentor. God can never tell you what you find in a book. And let me say this, if you keep opposing the way of life, when you begin to go through the consequence, I'm telling you the truth, God could be silenced because he would have sent someone, sent people who spoke to you and you did not hear. This is important. Every problem is a wisdom problem. Do you know there are some guys, you could be watching me right now, you are living outside the country, you are in Dubai, you are in... Turkey, you are in Indonesia, you are in America, but you have eaten your, your, your posterity. You prefer that, you know, there is this, uh, sorry, I'm going to use my vernacular, Igbo. There is this vernacular we say in Igbo land, Nakamo Gardini, take all the for. See, what it means is that, rather than keeping this money in the bank, or storing it in the pot, let it be in the belly. So there are people that you see that protruded stomach, that big stomach you see there, what is inside their stomach is their first story building is their real estate business. They are eating their real estate business with your mouth. Every two months you are going on outing, you relax. Now listen, does it make sense that you work for one month to earn half a million? Let's say you earn $2,000 in just a month. And then by the reason of trying to tell yourself, thank you for working, you spend, you spend almost the money. That's stupidity. I was able to come this far in my life because of one word, one word. I call it prudence. Prudence. Now, please, whenever, when, when, when we are done with this broadcast, I want to sit down and go and research the word prudence. It will make a difference in your life. Prudence brought me this far. Now, prudence is seeing the trouble that is coming tomorrow and preparing today to avoid it. Prudence will make you to eat less today to save tomorrow. When God gave uh, 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 Egypt seven years of plenty, he also funded that nation with wisdom. He said, the years of famine 
will be preserved by the years of plenty. It's very simple. The more I earn, the more I learn to use my resources. So I preserve the future. So some of the things you are suffering today, God has given you what you needed yesterday, but you ignored it. So the missing link to a lot of people's trouble today is affliction. People are avoiding the discipline that takes them to, the, to kingship. You can't rule. You can't be in charge of situation if you are not aware of discipline. If you don't put yourself in the path of discipline. And that's the major problem many people go through. They are not willing to sit down and learn. They are not willing to sit down and invest the time needed to be successful. Success is not a rocket science. Success is as simple as mathematics. One plus one will be two. Two plus two will be four. Four times four will be 16. If you put in this into this, you will get that. So most people's affliction, listen to me, is as a result of foolishness. Now, I could say this, somebody could be barren right now and you are blaming your mother-in-law, blaming God and blaming everybody. Can I say this? If you're a young lady here, ladies are supposed to be more careful with their life. If you get sick, quickly go to the chemist or uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, lab scientists and run a test in your system. You do MCS tests, two MCS and the other one and check what is wrong with your system. And the moment you find what is wrong, buy drugs religiously and drink it. It's not wrong to take pills. In fact, any gospel of faith that tells you to stop taking pills is not the gospel. It's foolishness. And I'm being real to you. I say, pastor, I take pills when I feel that I need pills to get myself. Somewhere around last year, I was having a lot of, either I'm sneezing, or I noticed that my immune system needs to be helped because I was always walking and walking and walking, and I don't eat well. So I told myself, I need to change that pattern. I decided to deliberately eat well, and then I had to go and look for immune boosters, and I started drinking. I stopped sneezing. <laughs> you know, one thing about my pastoral ministry is that I like telling people my day-to-day -day activity so that we don't keep you in, in dark. Life is in the living. Life is practical. That I take pills doesn't make me to be out of faith. You can I even shock you? We only bring in the faith equation where pills has failed. Yeah. I pray for you when you are taking drugs, they are prescribed for you, but it's not responding. Then we lay hands on you. But you have a headache, pastor, pray for me. Something must be out of your mind. Now I'm saying this for people who are not smart. If you have a problem with your body, go take care of it. Because you see, for women and even for guys, most people are right now barren. Why? Because a specific sickness is giving you trouble. You are not giving it attention. It will leave your body and start going to your reproductive system and start killing certain things in your body. So you see, tomorrow you are infertile, infertility sets in, and you are trying to blame the devil. It's not the devil, it's your foolishness. And this is what the Bible said. So fools, because of their transgression, are afflicted. One other reason why people go through what they call affliction is simple. <laughs> Let me say, it is because, number two, it is part of the program. This may sound illogical, but it's true. Before I explain this, can I tell you this? Do you know that God used the furnace to try the gold in you? He said, when I'm tried, I will comfort as good. Many people go through affliction because it's part of the program of God for their life. Sometimes, Every faith we profess must be tested. Very true. If you profess faith in any area of your life, it's going to be tried. So sometimes, God will allow certain affliction to come in people's life to actually try their faith. And listen to me, no examiner sets a test for you without having a mind to pass you to the next level. That means exam is a preparation to a new level. It's an invitation to a new level. So you need to pass that level. Now, I have a young guy. He's in Lagos State. The mother reached me and was explaining the pain they were going through. And in my usual manner, when people consult me to pray for them, when they're going through a tough time, I have to give you prayers. You need to pray for yourself first before I start praying for you. We are not prayer contractors. <laughs> so I gave him a number of 21 days prayer. And I told him, this prayer is going to get you on a kind of an S-ray. It's going to give you 
an X-ray. It's going to X-ray the real challenge, what you're going through. What is the matter? So, first day, second day, third day, somewhere around the seventh day, he had a dream. And in the dream, something happened. He said he saw himself in an exam hall. And the exam was so tough. Was so tough. He said he virtually knew nothing in the exam. And he said out of anger, he submitted his script empty. <laughs> so, and he went back to, to sleep again that same night. And um, the Lord showed him a particular man that is going to take him to America. And he woke up and he asked me, what was that? And I explained to him very plainly. When God starts showing you certain pictures or certain images, he's explaining to you the situation. When you are in exam hall in the dream, it means that there is a season of your life you are going through and you must write it. So people ask questions like, why is it that I always see myself writing the exam. I always see myself going back to school in the exam. God is explaining to you there is a season of your life you are going through. And that season, the same way is expected for someone to sit in the classroom and write the exam and pass. It's expected of you to sit down under the training of God and pass that exam. So this guy said, since he didn't know anything, he was angry, he passed the paper. I told him, that's the problem. You're always complaining, you are angry, but God is showing you something you must go through. And I told him, the second part of the dream is that the moment you pass that test, God is going to send you out of the country. So whatever you are going through is in the will of God. So I'm trying to explain this to you. Some afflictions are part of the program of God for your life. Now let me say something. If God has been supplying things for you and you are mismanaging his supply, he will permit situation to teach you a lesson. Yeah. I'm being real to you. So sometimes the afflictions we go through, they are from the plan of God for our life. Now, I'm going to explain something to you in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. He said, when you go through the waters, it will not overflow you. Very powerful prophetic scripture. Now, let me explain what that scripture means. It means in English... If the Bible said when, the word when means that there is a time of our life that we are supposed to go through the waters. Remember that there's a difference between when and if. It didn't say if you go through the waters, it said when you go through the waters. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 called this time evil days. And uh, Ephesians said, Put on the whole armor of God so that you can be able to withstand against the evil days. Ecclesiastes says, remember the Lord in the days of your strength. Why the evil days come not? One of the reasons we store up faith, your giving to God, your praying in the Holy Ghost, your devotion to the kingdom. Listen, let nobody tell you that giving to God is outdated. Let nobody tell you that paying tithe is not scriptural. Let nobody sell that idea to you. For, your, for instance, you will never put your money in anything that doesn't give you returns. In that same way, Bible says, does not nature teach you. If you will never go to environment or city that will not reward your effort, you will never go there. You do businesses that will give you better returns. If a business will eat your money or drown your money or drown your energy, you will not put money there. Now, Bible now says, does not nature teach you. Do you think that God will be investing in you if he has no interest at heart? If God doesn't have returns in his spirit or in his mind for you, I'm telling you, he's not going to put anything on you. So let nobody tell you that giving to God is out of date. That's what is trending online. But that's not for you. If you're listening to me, giving to God is one of the weapons you use in the days of trouble and calamity. That's why you should remember the Lord now. You are strong. You can have something to lay hold on in the days of trouble. Now, what am I trying to say? The reason we prepare ourselves against evil days, because the Bible says that those days will surely come. But when you go through the fire, it will not burn you. Now, let me give you a typical example in a, a, write it down in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. That scripture is so wonderful. Genesis 15. I want to prove to you that some afflictions are actually divine. They're actually divine. But I'm going to show you how to know whether this thing you are going through is from God. I'm going to explain it to you. How will I know this one is from God? How will I know this one is from the devil? I'm going to show you right now. But look at this. Verse 13. God was saying to Abraham, and he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them for 400 years. God is talking. 
He's trying to explain that this affliction is part of my program for their life. I'm going to keep them 400 years in Egypt for personal training, for discipleship and drilling. 40 years, listen, 400 years is actually 40 years times 10. God told Abraham, I'm going to put your children in captivity for a period of 400. And I said 400 is about 40 times 10. Why did I divide it? Because the number of a generation is 40 years. After every 40 years, a generation has passed. Now, it will take 10 generations to be able to have 400 years. So now, number 10 is the number of responsibility. Yeah, that's the number of responsibility. Now, it means that God wanted to raise a responsible generation before he can be able to entrust a nation to them. And that suggests that when people go through certain times, in fact, let me say this, the things you go through suggest who you will become. The training determines your reigning. God will not give you a training in the field you will never use in the future. So every difficulty you are going through in the process of God's training suggests where he's taking you to. And that's true. That's true. Bible says, despise not the chastening of the Lord because it is the one you have received. He chastises it. When you are going through certain affliction, for instance, if you are in a city God does not want you to be in, and you are sure you are a child of God, what happened? Things blocks against you because God needs you in another city. That training could be God. It may not be demon. It may not be village spirit. It may not be people from your, your environment. So God is going to be taking you through training. But look at God's promise now. How do I know that the pain I'm going through or the problem I'm going through is the plan of God for my life? How? Very simple. Very, very simple. Look at this now. Write it somewhere and don't forget it. Write it somewhere. This is important because this is where the problem is. A lot of people cannot distinguish between the pain they are going through from God and the one that is from the devil or from their foolishness. Of course, I've told you that how to know the pain from foolishness is that there's a missing knowledge. You will always be struggling in the area of your foolishness until you find the relevant knowledge. Now, but if it is God, how will I know that what I'm going through now is of God? Number one, look at this. God's will. God's will. We never take it to work. His grace cannot sustain you. Write it somewhere and keep it somewhere. God's will will never take me to where his grace cannot sustain me. What does that mean? The Bible said that when God appeared to Moses, he appeared to him as a burning tree or a burning bush. And Moses said, let me turn aside and see this great look. And when he saw, he said that the trees were burning, but the leaves were not burnt. That is the typical example of a training season of God for your life. You are going through seasons of hunger. Nobody is giving you money. It's like you are self-isolated. Things are not working in your life. But right within your spirit, you are at peace. The afflictions are real. The challenges are real. But it seems like it does not disturb your peace. It seems like you can contain it. It is the proof God is the one training you. I'm telling you, I've gone through seasons of hunger. I've known seven days there was no food. I had to live on anything what people give to me. Give to me. When I came to this city that the Lord sent me, it was a dry land, literally. There were no many kind of our types. So it was tough. They didn't understand my gospel. People resented me. I'm telling you, through those days, through those months, I was going through severe hunger. And I didn't know anybody here. It's like four hours or five hours from where I was raised. So nobody here. But you see what? Those days, it was tough, but I didn't feel the toughness. I just felt there was a grace for the season. Now, if you find grace in any season of your life, you are barren for years and Somehow, somehow, your spirit can still believe God. There is no fear in your spirit. There is no, there is no doubt that God will not do it. You are always comfortable. Something is always telling you it's going to be great one of these days. That faith is in your spirit. It means that God is using that season to do something that will startle the world. So, if you are out of grace in any tough time, it's a signal that affliction is not from God. So, God told him, I'm going to send your children for 400 years of training. Now, but number 15 of that same scripture, 
verse 14 he said also the nation whom they shall serve i will judge afterward they shall come out with great substance that's genesis chapter 15 verse 14. now what does that mean when god is done training you in a season he will give you the reward of that training that's very simple it's just like your examiner your lecturer who was once your friend he comes to the class everybody's laughing and joking and dancing around they are lecturers like that they are very good and humorous and then this is exam time that good lecturer everybody loves frowns his face he's in the class he's watching to look at your body gesture make sure that you are not turning your face and the guy becomes unnecessarily tough and you're like wow could this be my lecturer yes it is still your lecturer but you know what the difference that the one that was in class was actually your friend the one that is here now is your is your coach to your next level when God is silent you are going through exam and you see what each time God says an exam I tell you there is there is need for a test to have a testimony that's simple if there's no test there's no testimony so God is setting that test in that season of your life to bring you to a new face but you will always find grace so that's the second reason people go through affliction now I need to go to the last one and that is very important too many people have called me on the phone and narrated their problem and I can trace that there is nothing around God or the train of God for such people the Bible said in 1st John chapter 5 verse 19 we are of God literature he said and we know that the world lieth in wickedness the number three reason people go through unusual affliction is because of the presence of demons I call it the wickedness of the world there are satans listen to me the earlier you believe it the better that you deny that there are no spirits doesn't make spirit not to exist in fact they are only going to be feasting on your ignorance i'm telling you the truth i had a story yesterday a young boy received scholarship to go to australia that's where his destiny lied he was on scholarship so as soon as the guy left nigeria and then entered australia he began to cry he was telling all his brothers all the friends around why am i here take me back to nigeria why am i here take me back to nigeria he kept crying the first day the second day the third day and people were confused so a team of these guys came to him and said some of us who are in this land are illegal occupants but we are not planning to go back to nigeria we're looking for source of livelihood we left nigeria to come here for a living but you are a legal occupant you can walk through the street much more than us so you have a better advantage to be going to school and then be working you will make more money than us why do you want to go the young boy kept crying take me back to nigeria why am i in australia why am i in this place he kept crying oh until they booked his flight for him and he had to return to nigeria as soon as he landed nigeria and he knew he can't return back again so they asked him, he said, what am I doing in Nigeria? How did I come back to Nigeria? What is going on? And the people were confused. But you know what? I'm telling you the truth. He was being monitored by a mirror. If you, I don't care where you are, listen. You know, the Bible says that because Moab have not gone to captivity, his saint remains in him. There are some battles you have not seen. That's why you are too careless about life. That's why your prayer life is not important. If you know how bad and how sophisticated life is, you will, you will, you will put yourself in the charism of prayer. You will be spiritual. Spirituality is your escape to the wicked world. This is a wicked world. You can't lose your husband, lose your children, lose everything around you, and you are still looking for explanation for it. There is no explanation. Young man, go into prayers. There are wickedness. Especially if you are from Africa. The word Africa, Eka, means witchcraft. Yes, we are living in a witchcraft infested continent. And it's real. White men, they say their own craft produce aircraft. Our own craft produce witchcraft. Craft and craft is the same craft. We are living in Africa. You need to be spiritual. Sometimes you need to enter into some serious fasting and prayer. The Bible says that this kind does not go. There are some sicknesses, there are some afflictions that does not go. There are stubborn afflictions. You know what you do? If they become stubborn, you go stubborn. One of the reasons they want, don't want to go to church, don't want to give sacrifice to God, don't want to pay tithes, don't want to do spiritual activities, don't want to do fasting. Why, why are we fasting? Has Jesus not paid the price? Just keep talking like that. You will be shocked. The Bible said that you have to work out your own salvation. Jesus worked his own. You are going to work out your own. 
and you're going to work it out with fear and trembling. Jesus himself recommended that this kind does not go except by fasting and by prayer. There are some afflictions that does not have respect on your hairstyle. Doesn't even have respect on your confession. I am born again. Hallelujah. Everything is fine. You will confess and move into confusion and your eyes will clear. Okay? Dress up for battle. Ephesians chapter 6 said, we have to put on the whole armor of God because it is with it we can be able to withstand the fiery darts of the wicked. And what are those? Faith, revelation, knowledge, truth, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit which is the word of God, and the shield of faith.